The main panel control switch is in the off position, turn it to on. There's also a trip position if there's a fault in the electrical power downstream. Down here you have the motor start switch, your e-stop, which must be in the out position. There's indicator light showing there's power. There's an indicator light showing that the motor is on. In addition to these, there's a hydraulic oil heater switch that's thermostatically controlled with a main on-off switch. There's a hydraulic oil cooler which cools the oil. It has a main switch but is also thermostatically controlled. You would want to leave this in the on position, cooling the oil for any prolonged use or high heat areas. There's an emergency beacon switch, which is a warning signal if the machine's in operation. And there's a main power switch for the work lights, which are located at the crane and the end of the main beam. Before actually clamping down the hold down clamps, you need to remove the four hold down clamp retention bolts that are installed for shipping. There's one located at each clamp or the four corners of the machine. Remove the safety pin. Unlatch the jaws to clear the rail. Using the ratchet, uh, ratchet the hold down down into position until it makes contact with the rail. Then clamp the clamp tightly, making sure that it's under the lips or the top of the rail so it's secure. Replace the safety pin. Reversing the ratchet, ratchet the hold down up, which is going to pull the machine down tightly and secure. Repeat the same action for the other hold down at the rear of the machine. This is how the hold down should look when in place. One of the options of the McClellan liner handler are front hydraulic jacks. To deploy the jacks, move the lever till they make contact with the ground firmly and then stop. Do not lift the machine completely off the ground. After all the hold downs are in place and the boom turnbuckle clamp is removed, by actuating the ground control lever for the main beam, you can extend the main beam to and through the trunnion of the mill. Before doing this action, make sure that all personnel and objects are clear and all the hardware to the trunnion has been removed. By moving the lever in the reverse position, the beam can be retracted to the storage position. Please note, never use the main beam for pushing objects. It is not designed for this. One of the most important maintenance items of the liner handler is the rotation drive clutch adjustment that protects the rotation drive system. First, remove the cover, which is under the base of the crane. Then by using a 3 8 inch socket tool, loosen all the adjustment bolts. Then by alternating, tighten them just until they make contact. After all the bolts make contact, in an alternating action, turn one full turn each until all adjustment bolts are flush with the top of the clutch. This will ensure no free play, yet allow slip if needed to protect the rotation drive. After adjusting the clutch, be sure that the rotation drive chain is tightly adjusted by moving the idler sprocket until all chain slack is removed. After adjustment, secure the locking nuts. To actuate the liner dolly cart, first be sure all personnel and equipment is clear. By moving the dolly car control lever at the main operating station, the car can be deployed in and out of the mill. The 
McClellan liner handler comes standard with four-wheel drive and four-wheel steering. All four of the drive wheels can turn 360 degrees and power forward and reverse, allowing the machine to be driven into any position. This is a typical crane used on the McClellan 3-axis liner handler. The crane is a three-section telescoping crane with internal hydraulic cylinders, dual lift cylinders, and 360-degree continuous rotation. This crane is equipped with a swivel load hook for slinging the liners. The operator controls include an e-stop or emergency stop, crane up and down, extension in and out, rotation left and right, in addition to the crane controls, there is also a control for extending and retracting the main beam. The controls are full function, direct connected, and full metering for precise control. Here we're demonstrating the liner handler crane with the manipulator. The crane is lifting our certified test weight designed for this machine, swinging the load into the desired location. I'm operating the radio control function that includes safety interlock to prevent myself or the operator from releasing the load accidentally. All the functions are fully proportional and can be operated simultaneously. The manipulator has an up and down movement with full motion. It swings left and right, full motion. And it has the ability to rotate the liner 360 degrees continuous. I'm lowering the test weight onto a set of blocks, which would be just as easy as placing a liner on a mill shell. The manipulator includes emergency stops that can be activated by any ground personnel in case of any operational error. Here we have the rotating dolly cart. First, remove the latch. Place the handle in the operating position. And you can rotate the dolly cart 360 degrees. It operates on a regular rotation bearing. The rotation bearing does require grease as shown in this location here. This is the dolly cart cable system it has self-adjusters, but as the cable wears, it will require manual tensioning. Grease is also to be applied in these locations for the cable shivs. This is the main beam lock, which must be in place whenever transporting the liner handler, either with an overhead crane or any other type of transportation. Fichu transporter is shipped disassembled for easier shipping and lower cost. Using an overhead crane, proper slings and shackles, connect the overhead crane to one leg at a time, being sure that the shackles and the slings are connected securely. Using the overhead crane, lift the leg into place so the two flanges align. Be sure when assembling the legs that the two flanges are flush before applying the fasteners. When bolting the leg on, there are roughly 18 bolts, 9 on the top and 9 on the bottom flange. Install these bolts, washers, and nuts in alternating holes and secure with a wrench first. Then go back and fill in the rest of the holes for safety. Using an air impact gun or a wrench, tighten each individual bolt evenly across the top flange and the bottom flange. 
After the first leg is installed, repeat the same process for the second leg. Using secure connections, using the overhead crane and sling, lift the second leg into place. Install the bolts in the top flange and bottom flange. Tighten with a wrench or an air impact gun and double check to make sure that all the bolts are secure. After securing both legs, reposition the cables in the overhead crane to lift the entire transporter up in the air so you can remove the blocking and set the transporter down on the floor. After the transporter is completely assembled and sitting on the floor, it's now time to connect the hydraulic lines to the legs to power the drive wheels and the hydraulic cylinders. Each hydraulic hose is numbered with a matching fitting on the transporter itself. These connections need to be made utilizing a wrench and matching the numbers. There will be some residual hydraulic oil leak when performing this task. Once the transporter is assembled, it's now ready for operation. Utilizing the radio remote control, you can control driving the machine, steering the machine in position. You can operate the hydraulic lift cylinders that lift the feed chute and the pushback cylinders that break the feed chute away from the mill. All these are controlled by, again, the radio remote control.